Hearing the Voice of God Riddles of Jews and Christians by Rabbi Blumenthal My name is Br'er Caleb, PhD and my PhD stands for Post Hole Dicker for we continue to work on the proper foundation for the prodigal son and daughter. Is it possible to hear the voice of God? Well, there are so many riddles between the Jews and Christians and Rabbi Blumenthal deals with a couple of them in response to a doctor, uh, David Brown. And the problem that we have is here we are going into who is right. We have a rabbi and we have a person that is a Christian talking about who is Jesus. So we're talking about in Christian Timon exposed. And this is restorative justice, PMS versus PMS number 17. In other words, we are dealing with PMS from God's perspective. I hope that the women don't get nervous, but PMS stands for physical, mental, and spiritual. And from the negative side, from the opposing side, PMS stands for polit politics, political, money, and spirituality or religion. You see, in our modern time, you would think that we might know by now everything about faith and religion. Yet nothing is further from the truth. When Jeshua, Hamashiach, most people know him as Jesus, instructed his followers in Matthew 5.16 in the complete Jewish Bible, in the same way, let your light shine before people so they may see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. Now, why would that be a tremendous instruction for so many? or a sacrifice. It is through our actions that people will recognize the Father and will honor and glorify the Father. Now, my problem is that the fact that I've come to produce these videos is because it was the opposite. I was raised a Christian in a Christian family. My mom died very early in life and I was six years old, so my brothers and I we ended up in an orphanage, a Roman Catholic orphanage. For seven years I was there, and then when my father remarried, I didn't fit in the family again. And so, for a very short time, I had a chance to study. I could now come and basically recognize that I should be out of that family. And from there on, I've lived on my own. So a lot of things I had to learn and develop. But when I got to marry, I married my wife, 44 years ago, 44 and a half years ago, I learned an aspect in life that gave me an understanding about God's view. And God is not narrow-minded, folks. He is the creator. He is an awesome force and an awesome power. And he is able to help us understand this problem. So if you want to go and find out how to accomplish, accomplish this, how can you live and that the light of God can manifest itself in our life? But we need to understand something. How do we turn on the light and how do you get to know the light? See, there are a couple of things. If you're very practical, if you're an electrician, you come in an empty room, there is nothing. You have to start with first entering a place that has is totally Got it. In other words, there is no wiring, there is nothing. So you have to bring in the basics. So there is wiring being brought in, there's connectors being brought in, then there are boxes that we say, okay, that is where I like to have this and this and this, there are a couple of lights. Now, as he gets that in his mind, he puts it on paper. He submits that to the government uh, that is going over that and says, yes, sir, you are authorized to do that. And then when he goes in to work, somebody will come and check out if he has done what he promised to do. So now we have another problem. The paperwork has to match up with what he had in his mind. And as an inspector comes and checks out what he had in mind, this recognized now because reality is you flip the switch, the lights go on, you put in 
and computer and the computer works wonderful and the plugs are working now he got authorization yes sir it's approved thank you very much and we move on so the same spiritually so that requires us to learn and to speak a new language if we want to learn how to turn on the light because we can say well i don't care but if we want to learn the new light, if we want to know how to be the light of God, we got to be at least willing and open-minded, open-minded, okay, that we are willing to learn a new language. So 1 Peter 3 verse 18 states, For the Messiah himself died for sins, once and for all, a righteous person on behalf of unrighteous people, so he might bring you to God. So he, God, the, the unrighteous person, no, it was a righteous person that died for us unrighteous people. So he might bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh but brought to life by the Spirit. Ah, we have now a clue. This is something different than just learning, verbalizing, writing it down. There is another aspect here, and it says the Spirit. What is that exactly? I am sure that modern Christianity has shown and prayed for a greater understanding of the Word. I've been in many, many meetings, sometimes three or four meetings a day, for many months in a row. And I tell you also, I've been away for many, many, many months and maybe a couple of years in a row from that word of God. But I know and understand that many pray for a greater understanding of the word. And yet the term scientific investigators is alien to our perception of the word. Perhaps the key phrase is presented to us in words like knowledge belongs to him who has sought to find and to him to seek. In other words, if we are determined to find it, if I'm willing to put my mind to it, who thinks earlier than he does not know. In other words, if we don't think we know it, where you are willing to go for it, is this any different than the words of the apostle when he wrote, if anyone thinks that he knows anything, he knows nothing, yet as he ought to know. In 1 Corinthians 8, verse 2. So, so long as we think we know the meaning of the pagan religions written in the Bible, or the writings, the pagan religious writings, the Bible. Ouch! I'm going to say it again, the pagan religious writing, the Bible, and even the meaning of the purpose of life itself. The words of the apostle continue to plague us when he said to us, we know nothing yet as we ought to know. Oh Lord, this is heavy duty. See, the blindness is our own doing. We are either willing to open our minds, open our spirit, and be willing to be taught. So, had we so formed our life, we fulfilled the word. We became the bride of Christ and were indeed the people of the anointed and illumined mind. We would see that concealed was in the body of that narrative, the philosopher spoke of Christ in the locals in the manner of the Gospel of John, as Clemens writes. Thus in uh, Philebus, Plato, we had been the disciples of the barbarian philosophy, mystically called those atheists, who destroy and pollute as far as is in them lies the deity dwelling in them, that is the Logos, by associating with their vices. In other words, people kill off what lives within us because the Word of God, that is actually the start. Remember I talked about the fellow that walks in as an electrician in an empty room and he needs to install or prepare uh, illumination so that the light and electricity can be placed and people can work in that room. Well, that is the same what we are going to do today. Some of us don't like this per se, but I call it the disease called lying. Ay, 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 ay. I wanted to stay away from it, but as we know today, Mr. President Trump 
went for his first talk after a week of denial and showed up before people and declared what he was going to do. This disease called lying. It is a disease if you cannot tell the truth. For the truth to prevail, we must begin with a story. And it's so often the case, the work of real reporting is any narrative told is told in a framework. In today's world, the primary issue of context is that any whole story will typically involve a narrative long ago branded a scheme. So what is the truth then? Is the truth unanswered? A prolonged discussion between a Jewish rabbi Blumenthal and Dr. Brown could shed light on the difference between a Jew and a Christian. Though the question should not be who is better, the Jew or the Christian, the problem is why humanity is in such a disastrous position because we continuously continue trying to kill and maim each other for who is right and continuously trying to kill and maim each other for who is right. Folks, it hurts. According to James D. Francisco, PhD, one contains typical misunderstandings regarding the words of Jesus. However, having had the experience of traveling worldwide and physically living in different parts of the world for approximately 40 years plus, I can tell you out of involvement, out of personal experience, that when I moved to Canada, I now understand when I speak with an educated person from an, any country. When they speak English, I immediately hear if the person is a native or is trying to speak as a professional. There is a difference. Many people say, well, I do speak English. Wonderful. And as they are talking and looking and searching for the words, you know right away where they're coming from. That is not to judge, but that is just simply when you stand in front of a judge for almost 18 years like we had, I had to go through that experience. I spoke English, I understood English, but when I came there to do business, I got ripped off. And that is where I learned that a comma in the middle of a sentence can make the difference of $345,000. I also learned if you sign papers, notarize them, you shake hands with your friend or your brother or whatever, you can still end up in jail because you did not understand exactly what you were doing. So both brothers confirmed the Christian oxymoron exposure. The challenge that we have is the following. We have two people, and I mentioned it already, Christian oxymoron exposure. Two people, one a Jew and the other speaks fluent Hebrew. They both talk. One in behalf of Judaism, the other in behalf of Christianity. And James wants to discover and interpret and apply the actual truth about Jesus as a Christian. To clarify and if the present is actual teachings from Jesus and to see if Jesus was the founder of Christianity. But our brother Blumenthal, and I say brother, although I am not Jewish, he is still my brother. He tries to expose and prevent conversions from Judaism to Christianity. So that is the viewpoint from both as they are talking. So the conversation is an Orthodox Jew correct is an Orthodox Jew correct that Jesus was a Jew? Or did he argue with Jews as an outsider to the Jewish community? 
Now, those reading the Bible often read them through the eyes of Christianity, either Catholics or Protestants. Though I met some who read the Bible from the reader's perspective without being moved by any belief whatsoever. This person approached it from a scientific perspective. And I know that I didn't meet too many, but he spoke fluent Greek, he spoke fluent Hebrew, and he was a Canadian. So he had no affinity with the, um, the Jewish people, but he definitely could speak the language and studied as such. The believers community or the, the people that are in the different churches, if we can mix Roman Catholics and the Protestants for a moment, then we create two main divisions, separating the New Testament from the Old Testament. In other words, people divide the Bible and they say there are 66 books, 39 in the Old and 27 in the New Testament. And if we separate those two, we have two sets of books. All right. Now, I personally doubt that Jesus would recognize his fundamental teachings in Christian theology. Should I repeat that? I wonder if Jesua HaMashiach or Paul or Peter would come in our place right now a church or a place of learning and education and if they would recognize the books that we consider the Bible and if those books are indeed the fundamental teachings that Jesus, Jesus or Jesua did. See the New Testament is not a proper name for a collection of books yet many people even those with advanced training combine all three into one confused trinity. And sorry to say that, there's causing more disorientation and uncalled for disagreement. Since the Father confirmed that the path is narrow, we will not avoid this conflict with the new fundamental insights. So here we deal with a Christian oxymoron exposure. Now, remember, the oxymoron is just a contradiction. It's not making fun out of anything. It's whether we find it helpful to separate Jesus and Christianity to look at them individually before seeing how they relate to each other. We need to understand that it is uniquely impossible. My interest in presenting know-how, for I'm not trying to convince or persuade anyone, nor promote or challenge particular religions or denominations. You, my reader, you are encouraged to believe as you please. Though I intend no coercion, spiritual or intellectual, I do expect that you are uneasy listening. I understand because when I started this, I was not in the position to really make up my mind because I was so frustrated standing in front of a judge taken all my lawyers away after we spent millions of dollars defending an issue because I dare to speak up against a fellow that happens to be my friend for over 10 years. And he was also the head of the Freemasons. And when I declined his offer in a uh, transaction, he was so mad. He said, you are going to regret this and you will see how much power I have. And when I was faced with the reality that no matter how many lawyers I had, how much I proved in front of the court, I noticed that there is something in this world that is different than most people like to believe. See, reality is that Satan affects a lot of people. And why can he control those people? Because he is feeding them every day, every moment. And when we talk about the narrow road, the narrow way, that is the way from the PMS, physical and mental. We can talk with each other. We look alike. We are the same. But what sets us apart, what makes us different is the spirit of God. See, when we have the spirit of God inside of us, then there is something that we recognize in others. They're different. Why are they different? Now we can say, well, they dress different. They have the hair different. Well, folks, I tell you, I was always as a kid, my dad put a ball on my head and cut us because that is how they did it in the Navy. 
I was not a Navy cadet and I hated it. And I said, when I grow up and now that I have and can, I don't care. My hair is longer. I like it. And at least as a 70 year old, I've got hair on my head and I'm glad and I'm grateful for it. But what brings me to that spirit that shows only that I have something, but the spirit you can't see, but you react when you meet a person that carries the spirit of God. You notice it. There is something of a weight and, and depth when he speaks. That person has a love of God. Why? Because God is an awesome God. And he will recognize his children, he says, by the light that is in them. Now, I was taught at school, at university, at Bible school, Sunday school, and I taught many people that same story, that when we talk about the ten virgins, the five wives and the five foolish ones, they had a light and they went to get oil. But folks, the oil that they went for, that was already inside of them. It is something you, you have and develop. It's not something you go and get for, t for a few moments to say, here's a few bucks and get me some oil. The oil that is shining in us, the light that is shining, is when we do the will of God, when we do what God wants us to do. When we are made whole, then the light of God will shine. His love is the light. And if God's love is not recognized in our churches, then we folks have a problem we need to re-establish something. And we see the same with another fellow. It is in the latest elections, United States of America, and around the world there are many other elections, I understand, but the United States is something that really has an effect on many of us. And we should look at the alternative, where the love of God can and will manifest as prodigal sons and daughters, the way, the truth, and the light. Because it is mainly Christian supporters that maintain and support President Trump. And he refuses to accept the loss that occurred. But folks, big deal. He did his utmost best. And when he talks about his utmost best, he means everything. Whether he's using mafia or whether he's using Christians. He did everything to be reelected. And it failed. I'm not here to judge. I don't know what it is, but we face the same predicament. And we, when we do something and we fail, we're defeated, then why are most Christians, gun-toting Americans, that believe that skin appearance is more important than living a clean life as other people of color? The question is then open to everyone. Is this the answer of Christianity to the way, the truth, and the life? Yes, folks, the question is then open to everyone. Is this the answer of Christianity to the way, the truth and the life? And I know that there are some very big shots. Pat Robertson, Kenneth Copeland, Sid Roth, and many, many, many others that said, thus speak the Lord. I'm just a simple fellow. I call it the way it is. Is this the love of God? Is this the way, the truth, and the light? Or are we dealing with an oxymoron, a Christian oxymoron, a conflict of interest? Because if I am willing to follow the way, the truth, and the light, I am willing to leave everything behind. For God's love, God's love is the love that needs to shine in me. Tough times never last. Tough people, they do. God bless you.